bow our heads in prayer. Lord, great is your faithfulness. And that's why we're here. That's why we spend these few moments in your word. Because we know that the promises you make are promises you keep. Reassure us of that this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, we're going we're gonna to look this morning at, at a book that I've almost never preached on, and that's a, a little section from the book of Lamentation. And let me tell you, it's a book that lives up to its name. It may be the most depressing book in Scripture. I suppose Job could be right up there with it. But, you know, Jeremiah wrote this book right after the Babylonians conquered Judah and destroyed Jerusalem and tore down the temple. And so Jeremiah spends five chapters grieving over what's happened to his city and to the Lord's temple. He spends five chapters weeping over the wickedness of God's people. He spends five chapters lamenting that his call is a call as a prophet to suffer so that the people of Israel will see in his life the consequences of their sin. Think about it. You, you, this is, <laughs> read it sometime. Right? Right before you go to sleep. Climax comes in the third chapter. I just want you to hear some of the things that Jeremiah says. He says, God has turned his hand against me. That's cheerful. Even when I call out or cry for help, he shuts out my prayer. And there's the next one. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember that and my soul is downcast within me. There you have a, a, a flavor of the book of Lamentations. And just at that point where he reaches here, at that point when Jeremiah is ready to give up, when Jeremiah is completely discouraged and upset, it's then that something unexpected happens. Jeremiah holds out Reason for hope. He finds reason for hope in the place where it is always to be found. In God's surprising faithfulness. I want to reread some of the stuff that, that uh, Randy read earlier. He says, this is from Jeremiah, from the, our text. Yet this I call to mind. Yet, in spite of everything I just said, I call to mind, and therefore I have hope, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great, there's that song, great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for Him. Though He brings grief, He will show compassion so great is his unfailing love. Now, I don't know if you saw it in there, but Jeremiah gives us two reasons for having hope no matter what the circumstances. And the first is this. God is loyal to his people even when we are not loyal to him. Now, the reason that's surprising is that that's not the way we operate. Because you know, when someone betrays us, maybe not once, maybe a couple times, when someone stabs us in the back, when a friend hurts us on purpose, our reaction very often is finally to say, the heck with you. I don't need you in my life. Why should I do something for you after the way you treated me? And because that's the way we are, we think, that's the way God is. That if we're good to him, he'll be good to us. 
If we're bad, he'll be bad. And because we're bad every day, because we sin daily and sin much, we know what we deserve. And so we look at the things that happen in our lives and we look at the things that happen every day and we think, God must be angry. I must be getting what I deserve. We think that's how he operates because that's how we operate. And it's not true. That's what's so amazing. Jeremiah says it here, his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Now the word for compassion here could be translated loyal love. God is loyal in his love for us. He is loyal to his promises. He keeps them. And he doesn't do it because we deserve that. There's not the reason for his loyalty is not that we have earned his loyalty. We haven't. It's because that's the way he is. Look, look at what Jeremiah says. He says, that yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. Jeremiah, even looking at all the things that had happened, sees proof that God is faithful and that God can be trusted in this fact. If God was not being loyal, if God didn't love him, if God didn't love his people, they wouldn't just have had this disaster happen. They wouldn't even be around. His, the fact that we're alive is proof of God's faithfulness. Now, folks, we have an even better reason. We have Jesus. I mean, think about it. God looked at our unfaithfulness. He looked at our sin. And our wickedness is great. And he didn't say the heck with you. What did he say? I'll give my son for you. His answer for our unfaithfulness was to himself pay the price of that unfaithfulness. Wow. Think, think about what happened to you here. Did you know that on the day of your baptism, God already knew the whole story of your life? Did you know that he already knew all your sin, everything you would think, say, or do. He knew it all about me. You know what he did? He adopted you anyway. He adopted you knowing it all. Nothing that you've ever done surprises him. And even knowing it all, he said, I want you. Isn't that amazing? Think about what happens when we have communion. God knows what's happened in your week, doesn't he? He knows your moods. He knows how you've treated your family. He knows what you've said and done. And he knows what you're going to do in the week ahead. And still, he invites you to dinner. He invites you to his table. And he feeds you with his son's body and blood. God is loyal. God is faithful to us even when we are unfaithful. That's one reason. It's so surprising. You want to know the second reason? God's faithfulness is at work in all the circumstances of life, good and bad. You know, I don't know about you, but I, I always marvel at people that are going through a difficult time 
and yet are full of joy and happiness and faith. And I think, why can't I be like that? Or I think, what's wrong with them? Don't they know they should be miserable? (laughs) One of my mentors, who has long since gone on to heaven from this, David Cook, he was my pastor. Last five years ago, years or so of his life, he, he suffered with cancer. And everything they tried didn't work. And after a while, it seemed that every time the phone rang and the doctor called, the news was bad. And yet every time I spoke to David, and I thought I was going to minister to him, he was full of faith and hope and life, even once he had realized it wasn't going to get better. And I thought, what is going on? How does someone have that kind of faith in difficult situations? How did Jeremiah, in the midst of probably the worst moment in the history of his people, in a life that, you know, he was called to a ministry of suffering, how is it that here Jeremiah has hope? I want you to listen to what Jeremiah says. The Lord is good to those who hope whose hope is in Him. The one who seeks Him, it is good to wait quietly. Sometimes we just do have to grin and bear it and wait. He says, for the salvation of life, it's good for the man to bear the yoke, the burden, while he was young. Let him sit alone in silence The Lord has laid upon him. So, you know, even the bad things that happen, God has a hand in those things and allowing them to happen. Let him bury his face in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him offer his cheek to the one who would strike him. Let him be filled with disgrace. Does that sound a little bit like Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount, right? For men are not cast off by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, and sometimes he does, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love, for he does not willingly bring affliction or grief to the children of men. Jeremiah knew that God's faithfulness was at work in good times and in bad times. God used the Babylonian. He used the destruction of Jerusalem, the destruction of the temple, to bring his people back to him. He had their eternal good in mind. You want even better proof? Think of what God did through the terrible suffering and evil of the cross. He saved us, didn't he? You know, I I think of, of David's suffering. His faith became a witness to me and others, and I remember talking about it at his funeral, of God's faithfulness. No matter what's happening, the sun is there, even behind the cloud. You know, I I, I knew a congregation that went through five years of one conflict after another. It was terrible. And you think, why would God let that happen to a church? He used it to bring that congregation to their knees. 
turn them around, to work repentance and faith. Think about what we've just been through. COVID. Terrible. I remember when everything shut down, I know everybody was worried, worried about jobs, worried about their retirement, worried about, I was worried about how would we keep things going here? Did not God use this past year to teach us that He is faithful? Did He not take care of us? Yes, He did. Think about what He did here. He gave us a new direction during this time. He set us on the path of this call process. He started the live streaming in our midst, and and we could go on and on. God has supplied. God has provided. He has shown us His faithfulness. See, that's the way He is. Big situations and little. In good and bad. He's been teaching us one very important thing. His compassion never fails. His, they are new every morning. You you want to know the most surprising thing about that? Is that we who show up here every Sunday are still surprised by that. You would think, wouldn't you, that after walking with God through our lives, that we would expect it. God is faithful. Amen? Now may the peace of God, which pass all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life that is everlasting. Amen.